good morning everyone uh, in the see in the last class we have discussed about the auto cycle and the analysis of auto cycle and diesel cycle right so uh, the further continuation of that we will see today the analysis of dual cycle see the dual cycle always fall in between uh, uh, auto cycle and diesel cycle right so that thing we will discuss in the today's class so i request you guys first of all uh, subscribe the channel hit the like button and share with your all friends so that everybody will get benefit and also our channel will also grow right okay we will continue the today's class that is the analysis let me put the heading first that is analysis of dual cycle right analysis of dual cycle see why it is called dual cycle first i would like to ask you a question do you have answer of this let me draw before that uh, in in meanwhile i will draw the pressure versus the volume diagram for this please answer for this question see the basic uh, let me tell uh, the <clears throat> why it is called a dual cycle because see in the the heat addition in auto cycle is at constant volume right and the heat addition in uh, diesel cycle is at constant pressure but in the dual cycle the heat addition is both in constant volume as well as in constant pressure that thing how that thing is possible it will see in the, uh, now in the today's class okay see this is what the pressure p atm right means the atmospheric pressure okay and this is the clearance volume we, which we should need to provide this clearance volume else the cylinder the piston will fall on the cylinder head right so see uh, from the after suction the process starts from here right and it reaches up to here like this pv raised to gamma equal to constant right and later uh, see this is my point two then heat addition at constant volume this is point three I'll call it as point three dash, okay? And this is what the point three. This is what the heat addition at constant pressure, right? So this is what why it is called a dual cycle. This is how the dual cycle works. I think you, if you seen the my last two lectures, then you will immediately understand this. No need to explain or talk more talk needed for this, right? Okay, now see the process. We will see the process one to two. What it talks? That is the isentropic. This is isentropic compression, right? The process are uh, two to three. Is heat release at? Okay, heat release means heat addition, right? The here see the here the heat addition at constant volume. Here heat addition that is a Q at constant pressure. Okay, these two processes are see these two processes are PV raised to gamma equal to constant, right? This is heat uh, process two to three heat, right? Addition, heat addition at constant volume, right? Process three to four, sorry, uh, three to uh, see. 2 to 3 dash is the constant again 3 to sorry uh, 3 dash to again 3 there is a heat addition there are, here there are two times of heat addition right so here heat add at constant pressure you understood see please if you in the while explaining in all my lectures if you have any doubts please put in a comment so that i will able to reply your comments right so now 3 to 4 dash, it's isentropic expansion, right? Isentropic expansion. And from 4 to 1, right? The same, which is heat rejection here. Heat rejection, which takes place at constant. Volume is constant here, right? You understood this. This is how the a dual cycle works right so if uh, if i plot it in on, on pv uh, sorry it's a pv diagram if i plot it on ts diagram then how it looks like see 
let me plot it on ts diagram okay means temperature versus entropy this is the temperature axis and this is the entropy you have to show this arrows this arrows are very important right see in the interviewer may right may ask you question whether the temperature is rise in upwards or downwards that thing you should keep it in mind right so you have to see so you have to put the arrows here okay whether the in upward direction the temperature is rising or it's lowering that thing it will tells us okay now process one to two which is isentropic right so it will go a straight line vertical this is what the process one to two okay later there is a constant volume and there this is a constant pressure okay this is how the cycle looks like see i request you guys please see all my power plant engineering lectures because those lectures are the base for this this is the three dash point and this is a three point and this is a fourth point okay if you seen the power point lectures then i no need to talk more on this because these are the very simple right here the heat addition at constant volume and here the heat addition at constant pressure right and here the heat is rejected right this is what the heat rejection this is how the cycle looks like in the p diagram and see the area under this ts diagram what it this indicates this area indicates the q net right which is equal to q w sub w net right as this is a cycle from the first law of thermodynamics we will know right in the cycle right there will not be any raise in the internal energy as initial and final states are same okay now we will see the analysis of this we understood see before going the analysis you should know the proper how to draw pv and ts diagram once you understood that then the rest thing is very simple for you guys okay see now process 1 to 2 we will see what happening in process 1 to 2 see the process 1 to 2 is isentropic compression right that is what the pv rest to gamma is equal to constant right so i can write that it's pv p1 v1 raise to gamma is equal to p2 v2 raise to gamma this i can write okay then if i further simplify this then i will get that is a p1 by v1 is equal to v1 by v2 what v1 by v2 indicates that is what the compression ratio is right so the p2 i can write that is a p1 r raise to gamma where r indicates the compression ratio right okay now if i have to write it in terms of temperature right then t3 dash i can write t3 dash by t2 is equal to or this row right so the t3 dash which is equal to t2 by t2 row row is the expansion ratio right so this is a t1 sorry row is it's not cut off ratio right the row is a cut off ratio T1, sorry, I can write T1 R raised to gamma minus 1 rho. So T3 dash, I can write it as T1 R gamma minus 1 into rho. Okay, this is what all about the process 1 to 2 means isentropic process. I can able to draw, plot this P2 and T3 temperatures, right? So we will now we'll move further, right? The next process is after 1 to 2, that is process 2 to process 2 to 3 dash right you see in the process 2 to 3 dash the volume is constant okay and pressure is directly proportional to if the volume is constant then pressure is directly proportional to temperature right if we treat air as ideal yes okay p3 dash my p1 i can write this is what the row okay p3 by p3 dash by p2 okay this is what the cutoff ratio right so p3 i can write p3 dash i can write that is p2 rho which further i can write that is p1 times r raised to gamma by rho like this i can write so finally i will get p3 dash which is equal to p1 right raised to gamma rho see here how we are deriving these formulas we know the p1 is the atmospheric pressure right the, see the unknown here we know this p1 is atmospheric pressure right r we should know the r okay while designing the um, cylinder right while that is uh, design the engine components we should know this r right r and yeah, r and this row so the p3 uh, accordingly we can find out the three 
this P3 dash, right? So now T3 in terms of temperature, if we require that is, right, this is what T3 dash is equal to T2 rho, okay, which is equal to T1 gamma minus 1 in rho. So the T3 dash is equal to T1 R gamma minus 1 rho. Like this I can write, right? See in the exam this question is asked, right? So you should know this all, how to find out this temperatures, right? Now the process, the next process is, that is process 3 dash to 3. This process we will see. See here the pressure is constant, right? So the P3 dash is equal to P3 which is equal to P1 raised to R raised to gamma by rho. So the P3 here that is P1 R raised to gamma rho. I can write like this. Okay. So I can able to now find the P3. P3 is which is equal to P3 dash. And earlier we have already find out this P3 dash. Right. So again in, in terms of temperature that is T3 by T3 dash which is equal to V3 by V3 dash, right? V3 divided by V3 dash and V2 are same, which is equal to alpha, right? So T3 equal to T3 dash, alpha is the expansion ratio, right? So T3 equal to T1 uh, uh, R raised to gamma minus 1 rho alpha, okay? This is what the gamma minus 1, don't confuse with this. Up till now, no any doubts? I think you think you guys understood everything. Okay, now we'll move on to the next process. See, after 3 dash to 3 dash, which is the next process? That is 3 to 4. And this process we have already studied. Process 3 to 4. This is what the isentropic expansion. And PV raised to gamma is equal to constant in this. So I can write P3 V3 raised to gamma is equal to P4 P4 raised to gamma. So P4 by P3 which is equal to P3 by V4 raised to gamma, right? So I can write this that is 1, my, one upon mu, right? Raised to gamma. So what the mu is? That is mu is the <clears throat> R by alpha. So I can write this R by alpha means alpha I can take up right and this r is downward so the finally that is p4 by p3 is equal to alpha raised to gamma divided by r raised to gamma so what the p4 i can write that is p3 gamma raised alpha raised to gamma divided by r raised to gamma okay this is my p4 okay this this is how i can able to draw all the uh, pressures Okay guys, any doubt up till now? Now the next process is 4 to 1, okay, means the cycle will complete. This is the last process, that is process, process 4 to 1. See in the 4 to 1, the volume is constant, right? Also the price, if the volume is constant, the price is direct proportional to temperature. So I can write T4 by T1 which is equal to P4 by P1 which is equal to P1 alpha sorry this is alpha raised to gamma rho divided by P1 right so T4 by T1 which is equal to alpha raised to gamma rho in the gate this much detail will not ask but you should know this that's why I am teaching here okay like in the gate there will be very simple problems not that much complicated problems asked as of now, right? On the misfiring, there are many questions asked in the gate. So you should know about that, right? Now we'll see, see, this is all about the process we have discussed. The next thing you should know, that is the P, um, uh, the, the heat addition and constant pressure, that is MCP, right? T3 minus T3 dash. Okay, so if I can write this further, that is CP, right, T1, R raised to gamma minus 1, rho, alpha minus T1, R gamma minus 1, rho. This I can write, alright, so MCP, heat addition means it is MCP delta D, that thing 
you should keep in mind anywhere if heat addition is there then you should remember that thing right that is alpha minus 1 this is in process qp right now the heat rejection right q rejection from 4 to 1 process that thing we will see okay see heat the rejection process of 4 to 1 let me change the color so that you will guys can will not get bored right 4 to 1 see here the qr which is equal to m cv here right t4 minus t1 because heat rejection is constant volume so m cv uh, this is t1 right alpha what t4 is t1 alpha just now what what you are that thing i am putting here minus t1 okay which is equal to m cv m cv t1 i will take it common right so the remaining term is that is r uh, alpha raised to gamma rho minus 1 this thing i will get right you understood this now see the heat addition and heat rejection I calculated now the next thing is that is efficiency right the efficiency how to calculate the efficiency that is 1 minus Q rejected by Q added or supplied right so if I what the Q reject just now we have calculated that is MCV T1 alpha is to gamma okay minus 1 divided by mcv t1 r is to gamma minus 1 rho minus 1 plus mcp right the t1 and nothing i am doing i am just that value i am putting here rho alpha minus 1 like this right this is what the heat addition just a minute okay now see the if I simplify this further then I will get alpha raised to gamma rho multiplied divided by r raised to gamma minus 1 right rho minus 1 plus gamma rho alpha minus 1 this thing I will do and this is what the efficiency of dual cycle you understood this this is how we have let me this is the efficiency of the dual cycle right you understood this efficiency how to calculate the efficiency of this dual cycle if you need out please ask right because see uh, i explained this quickly because see ultimately this is only depend uh, um, this is how the efficiency we have derived efficiency of this auto cycle diesel cycle the similar way we have to derive this right see in the auto cycle one thing you should mind in the auto the r that is a compression ratio is always less than 11 right but in diesel cycle it ranges r is greater than 20 okay so that the efficiency will get maximum in this in the okay see up till now the the man company right this company have raised the efficiency they can reach up to 30 53 percent sorry okay with the one engine they have claimed up till now right now <clears throat> now one more thing i have to discuss here right about ships see in the ship fuel which ship fuel one of the my student asked the ship fuel user see in the ship fuel the heavy fuel heavy oil is used right see this how this heavy oils comes see whatever the uh, the refinery of this petrol and diesel done and some amount of the unwasted oil is remaining that is what this heavy oil is right and this cost of heavy oil is very less and this is used in the case of a ship fuel right so see the ship is too much heavy right so the cost is very less almost three to uh, three times lesser than this 
what the actual petrol is getting okay this is what the heavy oil is used in the ship fuel one of the friend asked that's why i answered this question okay guys then with this we'll stop for the today's class i think you understood this dual cycle okay and uh, we'll continue our further lecture of this on this ic engine in the upcoming classes right okay if you under if you not understand anything in this class please put in a comment so that i'll once i read the comment i will reply for that comments okay and thanks for watching uh, have a nice day bye take care